All right. Is your, okay, so we're going to go ahead and start the devotional. I'm going to talk about all the fun things that we got going on. First, I want to let you guys know, ladies, you will get your WWJD bracelets. She, um, our, um, Takia, our parent, uh, our parent connect director, she has sent them out so that she's given you multiple though, not just like one each. She's given you about 13 or 14. I think she said, Ooh. so now you have a challenge to start to invite people to get into this call. Anybody that decides to get a part of this, this 21 day, 21 day devotional, you give them a bracelet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions about that? Huh? Um, my friend can't come to the meeting right now because she's packing to move to her new house. She's oh, that's what she was saying. Yeah. Oh, do you hear? But um, when you can get, it's going in and out. It's going in and out. Is it burning it or something? Mm -hmm. Still, it's bad. It's going in and out. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so sorry. I was, you know why? It's because I, I bet you the sound was out of in the air. So listen, if you guys can um if you guys can meet up with her. And you do meet up with her again. She gets on the next devotion. Even if she was on the last one, it doesn't matter. Give her that bracelet. You're going to be getting it today. It should be coming in tonight at the address you guys gave me. Okay? Okay. Excited? Yeah, you WWG bracelets. Mm -hmm. And again, I just want to say a little short congratulations um, to you guys as well. Still for getting those scholarships for your grade. And then secondly, I want to talk about um, uh, oh. as well. Can I say uh, something? Sorry, I just remember this. Can I talk to you at the meeting about the scholarship? Because I have something important to say about that. Okay, you can continue. Oh, yeah. Is everything okay? Yes, it's just, oh, I'm Tell still me. debating on to go to college right now. Well, this semester or not, because wow. I don't, I'm still thinking about what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I have an idea, but I feel like it's going to probably be a little too late to, um, like, change my major. Well, not change my major, but, like, get in the classes that I want to get in right now because it, we start school next week. So, I'm like, I feel like it would be better for me to um, start semester, next semester because that it give me, like, more time to actually think about what I want to do. Let me just tell you with my experience, and I get what you're saying. Let me just tell you with my experience with college. The first two years is almost like it is in high school. It really does not matter what your major is. You take core classes. No, I've already taken my core class. Wait, what? You took yeah, I've been hard. No, I'm trying to say just go ahead and still start because no matter what, you're gonna those classes are going to be okay to use for any major you change. Especially the first semester. Just go. I think it's good to just go ahead and start. I, ch I, I changed my major from business to communications and it was easy peasy. It, I had friends change their major from business to doctor to become a doctor. Easy because, you know, your freshman year is so raw and they know that. And I don't, I just want you to be not lose cold feet in the motivation of what you're doing because that this solid semester Honest to God, truth, this whole thing that's going on with the whole virus and stuff and pandemic is, I call it favor for a lot of people. Your stuff is going to be a lot easier than you think that it is. It's harder. Trust me, because I'm teaching right now at GCU, and it's a lot of things they don't are not going to have to do because it's online now, and it's, it's through the Zoom and stuff, and they get less, they're not going to get have to do as much as work. They just got to understand and process it. And I really believe if you start off this semester in a situation where there's favor, I see COVID as favor, not fear. Say COVID, repeat after me, COVID, COVID. Is, is not fear, it's it's not not fear. fear. but favor. But favor. Why is it favor? Because there's going to be blessings that come with when all things work together good for those who love the Lord. So, and that is called to do his purpose. 
So it's going to be favor of the Lord, whatever the, whatever the bad things that's happened, it's going to be favor on your end. I believe this is a perfect timing for you. So pray about it a little bit more, but I think you should, should not hold back because that will hold back on a scholarship too. Do you know what I'm saying? That's not a coincidence. God gave you a scholarship at this time of $500 for school. It's not a coincidence. There's, there's no, there's no if of ands or but about that. Like this is timing and he's perfect in his timing. So really pray about that because he's perfect in this time and the enemy wants to put fear in us. So we won't get the favor. You hear that? Yeah. Oh, uh, also, um, you know how I got the $500? I looked on my profile and I can't, I don't know where it is. I don't know where to look for it on there. So, yeah, don't worry. I've I've been emailing her. I asked her if she already if it's already been sent or not, and I gave her all your information. But I'll send another email again. Don't worry. It's gonna be it's gonna be sent into some in some way inside inside for your school information. Okay. So they'll, they'll they'll send it through there, and you'll you'll see a payment some kind of way, maybe either uh, in a school payment or whatever it may be. But I will send her and um and and give her give her your contact information if need be. But I'm pretty sure she said all she needs was your student ID information, and I okay. gave it to her. So I will give it to her again and ask her just uh, just to be aware that they're they're asking uh-huh. if it actually um went through, um and they would know, like to see where it, their parents would like to see where where it went to in the scholarship. Like what okay. what part did it go to? Did it go to your books or does it go into you know the bank or whatever? So I'll find out, okay? Don't worry. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, um, let's pray because I want to. I feel like you know, there's there is some concerns about you know things that I I don't want the enemy to take what we're learning and receiving because there is a lot of stuff to be afraid of, but it's not for us t- as believers to be afraid of it. It's for us to understand that there's going to be a favor for us in it okay you, you you don't you don't fall into that so lord i just want to thank you for this opportunity that we, if we'd never had this this uh this pandemic and and this opportunity to, to to seek you god to seek your face oh lord we would have never done this devotional we would have never done the the things on zoom to get to know we would have never even got these scholarships we never even got any of this stuff so it's our favor father god it's in our favor and that we've been able to seek your face at this time and you've been blessing us, God. None of these things would have happened, oh Lord. We have never would have got the scholarship. We never got the fundings and things like that if, if the enemy didn't try to start something up that could work for our good. Lord, I pray right now that these, and I thank you for these young girls and these young, I'm sorry, young women, Lord, that are seeking your face at this time. They do every single devotional because they want to change. And they want to see a change in their heart. Lord, I pray that they receive the word that we learned today in the lesson. And Lord, I pray that they, that you, you remind them every time there's doubt, fear, um, anxiety, worrisome, that that's all from the enemy, all right? Guilt, all from the enemy. And Lord, that you would remind them that you give them love, you give them comfort, that you give them favor and blessings in the place where the enemy tries to stop them for your good. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I pray that you bless us and receive the word and that we understand the word as we learn the word. In your son Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, mind my screen, okay? I'm going to share my screen so we can be able to see the devotional. There's my cell phone. Okay, wait. Who is that? I don't know who that was. She's pretty though. Can you guys still see me or just see the screen? Something happened. You guys don't see anything? Okay, okay. we see it now. Okay. Great. Can you see me or just the screen? The screen. Just the screen. Okay. So we're gonna do the devotional today. Um uh, for this is a devotional for oh this is not it. This is not the one. Twenty-one. This one. So I'm wrong. I'm sorry. You still got to do twenty-one day, which is the next day. This is the one for today. You guys, has anybody done that's dope today? No. Okay, good. So you still have two more days. So we're doing this one together. So you guys can mark it down and follow through and get it done now. 
And then the next day, um, you could do the, the last one by yourself. And then that will be a week off. But let's get this one going. I'm going to go ahead and read. And I would love for someone to read the scripture after this for me. So I'm going to nominate one of you guys. So it says, that's dope. If you're like me, when, when you probably pray to experience all the miracles and signs in your own life, which we read about in the Bible, you might even be a bit jealous of people in the Bible who were, who were the witnesses of supernatural acts of God. I bet we all would love to see the Red Sea part, Lazarus being raised from the dead, be a part of a story where Jesus throws his merchants out of the temple and provide we're not the merchants, provided we're not the merchants. Thank God I can assure you of one thing. Even though the day of Pentecost, the awesome day when the Holy Spirit was sent, happened almost 2,000 years ago, you and I can still experience these things today. We need to understand and not be afraid to believe in the regular Christian life means miracles, spiritual interventions, and revelation. It brings love, joy, peace, and purpose. We need to understand it, not be afraid to believe it, that the hunger for the supernatural is in the DNA of every person that believes in Jesus. Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you and you and you, all y'all. He lives in us and doesn't let us settle for what we can see, hear, taste, or touch. Our hearts know that there can be so much more in life than just what we can perceive through our senses. To become abnormal Christians, we need to go further than just the comfortable Christian life that we may know. We need to redefine normal Christianity in a way that is according to God's perspective on normal, which is which says that we were called not to talk about our fears or worries. Look at that. But about God who could do anything. What? We just got through talking about this. We should be aware of the fact that God is always pouring out his blessings on a longing heart. The question is, do you long for it? Do you long for God? Do you long to want him more of him? And here's the prayer. You guys could do that on your own. But the challenge is saying that the Bible says we should eagerly desire greater gifts. What do you do about it? Do you pray for it? Do you desire them? Your challenge is to read about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Read how they work and what they're characterized by and pray for them to come into your life. If the baptism of the Holy Spirit is in accordance with your theology, but you haven't been baptized yet, pray for it and ask your leader or pastor to pray for you as well. It's funny that they're talking about baptism and um, I'm just going to go to one ne next screen so you guys can be able to uh, read one scripture. But I just I want to talk to you guys about that baptism part because um, it's very important. And um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it in a minute. But can um, Lauren, can you read this scripture for me? Yeah. Just read it. Okay. Me. Jesus answers and said, wait. Just read it for it me. Said, it said said. Well, it's the same thing. Replied said same thing. Just say it. It's just saying the translation you have. That's fine. Okay. I'm just going to read this one. Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My father will love them and we will come and make our home with each to them. Oh, of them. Sorry. I thought Wonderful. <laughs> Desiree, can you read that one? Yes. Okay. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, yeah, and the ends of the earth. Wonderful. So different. And lastly, um, can you do this one, Destiny? Yeah. When a day of that's the Pentecost. Yep, Pentecost. And they all together in one place, sending a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from the heavens and flooded and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of the fire that separated and came to reach on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Sorry, there is like work going on in the background because my dad. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get out of this screen. Hold on. Like pepper. You guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have Can you guys see me now? 
Yes. I wish there was a chat. Right. So I want to tell you guys about what we just read. So wanting this is this is perfect timing to really dig in and seek God. And this is why everything has happened like it has. So you could so you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. I was um but I found out there was a revival that was going on in Peoria, where I'm currently trying to move in the neighborhood at. And I went to this revival and I used to go to this church to go to revivals all the time. I just so happened to find out that they are having services during this time. They tell, they keep the place completely clean. A lot of people are. People wear their mask. And not only that, they, um, they, they let everybody know that as of our religious faith, we're allowed to have services. But if you choose that you have any, if you, you don't come at your own risk, really, you know, that, you know, to know that you, if you're health, if you know you're, you're going to have, you're not healthy, don't come, whatever. The service was outstanding. And then I went to the revival as well. And then I had two people speak over my life, prophesy over me and told me that the things that God is doing and more in me. I knew at that point I needed to seek God even deeper. I needed to start fasting and praying and find out what more he's doing in me. This is what you guys are doing at your level and your faith right now. And your faith is going to keep growing and growing like that. At the end of this revival, the next Wednesday, they offered baptisms. And I promise you, you would have cried of all the young women. I'm talking about young women that said they were abused, sexually abused, had been beaten, all different kinds of women. They didn't know each other. And said, because of this revival, I've given my life for Christ and I'm getting baptized today. It is real. The Holy Spirit is real. It's alive. He's alive. He's well, and he will live in you. And getting baptized is, is a serious decision, but it's, it's a changing process. And the first start is asking for the Holy Spirit, just like in this te teaching, to start to live in you asking for the Holy Spirit. We have been given dominion on this earth to have authority, but God only, only gives it to us as we petition to him to have his power, to have what he has in heaven to come in her. Do you guys ever heard the scripture? It says, um, it says, um, your kingdom come, your will be done like it is in heaven on earth. Right? Mm -hmm. How do we get from heaven? How do we get things from heaven to earth through prayer, through asking and petitioning it up, um, to, to God? But if we don't pray, if we don't take things seriously and ask God, Lord, like this question that they're asking us to do, he's not going to give his power to us. We have authority here. We have dominion, but he's saying you have the authority, but I have the power. And the only way you're going to get this power is if you have a relationship with me, and if you, if you petition what you have the authority in, and you have to know that by reading his word. Okay. So it's a real, it's the same process as a lawyer or a doctor. You can't skip the nurse or you can't skip things to get to certain processes to get things done. Sometimes you can with God's favor, but I'm just saying, you've got to know the laws. You've got to know the word. And once you learn the word, not that you guys have received the word, it's time to ask for what is already yours. You are allowed, you are, you are a spirit first, body second, that is already in a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He, so he's been asking, all you have to do is ask him to come in you to be on earth. Do you get what I'm saying in that? For the Holy Spirit to come, he has to come in us to be on earth. Yeah. Okay, great. But we he's not going to come unless we petition it, unless we pray, unless we have a relationship to pray. And I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I'm 39 years old, and this is stuff I did not know mm -hmm. for many years. Is it me? Some stuff I'm telling you right now, I just found out from fasting and pray, praying just this last weekend. Because be it's sure. theology... What's that? Say it again, Des. I have mine on. Oh, it's 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 because at these times, theology has been twisted, and people have um, blocked the opportunity to know truth of God. But God's truth always prevails.
So I'm really excited that you guys um, have this opportunity to think about those things. Have any of you guys ever been baptized? We all have. Yes, we all have. We all have. How old were you? Uh, we were younger. We were probably like oh, I was a baby. Probably eleven. I remember. I don't remember. Yeah, no, I wasn't. I, there's a picture. I was actually a baby. When I was You're a baby. baby. But I got baptized before. After that, I mean, got baptized twice. I was probably about when we were ten, and then when we were, <laughs> we both ten talking. or pre yeah, Good. I, I got baptized when I was twelve. I didn't. I'm not gonna lie. I, the, that same day, I was I, I was cussing people out. Like I I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah, I was I was very bad. Yeah, very bad. <laughs> so then, when I I still believe though. Don't get it twisted. God, you know, I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, which I think is different. When you start to speak in tongues, when you start to do things like that. I got baptized with that when I was then I did around twenty nine ish. I I um I don't know I was older than that because I was pregnant with that in my thirties. I got baptized with Daniel, my oldest son, but he's five, so five years ago. And I got baptized in the glory, and it was so important because I needed to get launched and filled with the Holy Spirit in a different way because I hadn't I hadn't released the old me all the way yet. So there is going to be different levels sometimes, and sometimes you got to get baptized more than once. Just and baptism doesn't prove it doesn't prove that you're not a believer. It just gets you back into alignment of understanding. I want to receive the Holy Spirit, and the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't just by going in the water. It's inside of praying, asking Him to come inside of you. Yes. So it's a very important. Any any questions about this teaching? Um, I think this is a wonderful teaching. And there's some good questions like, how, how, you know, are you doing that? Are you asking God? So what do you think about uh, some of these questions, um, Desiree, Desiree, about the teaching about the Holy Spirit and just about, you know, he's, that's why I said, I like it's called dope because it's dope. It is dope once you get these kinds of gifts of the Spirit. It is. Okay, so the questions from the devotional? Is that yeah. Like, what do I think about it? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, hold up. Oh, that's not good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the question. Again. I'm buying mom one of these protectors. Yeah. I don't know. These are just, I feel like these questions are yeah, what stuff doing? you have to really think about because I don't know. I feel like no one can really answer those questions yeah. for you except for yourself. So that's what I was saying, like, just believing in God and going through the, this process, oh, yeah. like, the um, the challenges that they have us do, and I don't know, I just, all I can say is really is, you can answer these questions based off of how you feel, and if you feel, like, your relationship with God, and stuff like that. Yeah, how is your, I mean, do you mind sharing us your relationship with God, and how you feel, how you feel that this this whole devotional has changed you or grow helped you grow. Can you share a little bit about that? I'm gonna go a little bit in the past. Well, mm -hmm. my family, my parents, they we ba they basically raised us in church. So mm -hmm. I've known who God was my whole life. Mm -hmm. And so I, when we did this devotional, I wasn't new to him, but. I would say that I would, the more I've gotten older, the more I've actually kind of like slacked a little bit. Mm -hmm. Cause when you're getting older, you're I'm still agreeing. learning stuff. You're still learning about stuff. Right. And you're still learning about like who you are as a person. And so me, I guess the more I've gotten older, the more I've actually started really paying attention to the things oh, that I goodness. know, like, like, from what my parents taught me, I've actually started taking more interest in it and started actually looking more into it and what it is. And so what I'm saying is for this devotional, I feel like it was, it was actually, I don't know how to say it, like interesting because like I said, I backslid it. And mm -hmm. so to get on track, mm -hmm. do this challenge, I think kind of helped me mm -hmm. too. Because, yes, mm -hmm. this app, before we did this devotional, I've had, like, daily scriptures and all that. Mm -hmm. I read them, but it wasn't really 
that hidden to me and all that. Right. It wasn't hitting the spot. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, uh, it's okay. Oh. And and now that we're not going to church too, you know, a lot of people can't go to church. This is like it's teaching us that we're the church. It's teaching us it's not the church responsibility for us to to have a relationship with God. It's reminding us, right, that who's the church? You're ha we're having church right now. Yeah, we're fellowshipping about Jesus. Mm -hmm. So um, I thank you for that, Desi. That mm -hmm. that you said that because at the end of the day, like you know. The world isn't the same, even within the Bible, same as when you first started, when, same as when you first got saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's changed. Yes. And you have to, you have to grow as well and change as well. Mm -hmm. Not for the world, but for more in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that you backslide so much because, you know, yeah, we backslide, but it's so much of understanding that. Am I going to be more of the world or is the world or am I going to be more of Jesus? Because the world is not supposed to be, I'm not supposed to be more of the world. Never. Never. Mm -hmm. And so that's the, that's the difference. And I can see that. I can see the growth in you, my love. And I'm proud of you. So Destiny, hmm? I love your nails. I, I love your nails. They're beautiful. Thank I you. love it. Okay. And I would love to, I would love to hear a little bit about how you feel um, this devotional has made an impact for you so far because i want to do another one and i want to make sure this is happening this is working as well for you guys okay so the devotional how has it helped me it's still not the one we just did or the whole this thing this is the only one we've done yeah. so far <laughs> You said, how has it helped me or how... How it has it impacted you, girl. Oh. Well, that's helped too. Uh, be honest. Can I see? <laughs> okay. Um, to be honest with you, I do not know. <laughs> uh, Thank you for being honest. I think... I don't know, because... Like Desi said, we were grown. We were oh, raised in being in a church and stuff. Right. And being in a church, we were raised in a church. So I, we were telling, we were talking about this, and I was like, I don't know. I feel like I was, I feel like I have to experience something to like make me closer to God. That's good. Because I feel like I wouldn't say. Well, it. you should be closer to God because there is a thing called heaven and hell. Yeah. I know, Lauren. Can I get what I'm trying to say? Go ahead. Good comment, Lauren. Good job. But continue, Desi. Because, because like, because so, yeah, I just want to, can you, can you explain it? Because I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, if I said the wrong thing, what are you trying to say? Okay. No, Jesse, I want to hear your voice. You have your own voice. You have your own thoughts. But I get what you're saying. You're going into a direction of saying, like, look, like, my faith is not going to get stronger by constantly Bible- Dumping me with it. You want an experience with God. Yeah. You have to get closer to him. That's yeah, really that too. Because some people, you know, you hear a lot of people have stories and testimonies saying that they went through this one certain, like, experience. <laughs> like, some people. Their testimony. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah and that's how they got closer to God. They have different, like, some people have extreme testimonies on how they got closer to God. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's what Desi's saying from what I be, from what I heard. But when I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I don't really think that's how it should work. Because <laughs> why do you have to go through something so horrible to get closer to him? Well, that's a wonderful statement. Our flesh is very, very bad. It's, it's, humanity is, since we made the mistake of um, bringing evil to the world, that our flesh just yearns for it. So when you're getting, when your flesh is constantly yearning for that and your spirit is not strong and does not, doesn't know the truth about who it is the flesh wins and sometimes it takes to where the flesh has completely ruled you to all that is evil 
for you to realize you need a savior. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's a testimony. But you guys, there's people that have good, good testimony. Mm -hmm. This walk that you guys had since you started GYBW. These are good things that I've been blessing you with. That's a testimony. Yeah. Man, I did this and I mean, I knew that was God. Like, man, I was about to do something with this dude and but I was all in this class and, and I knew that was God that stopped me from that because he was there and the and because I was meeting, conference, workshop. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I knew God and we started doing the devotionals and, and Gary doing the whole thing. What did you huh? just say? You're going in and out. What did you say? Movie. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. But you're saying like, man, I knew this was God because, you know, I've been seeking him and been praying, but I want to have an experience, but it's never, it's not going to always have to be a bad experience. When I got my basketball scholarship, I prayed and fasted for two weeks when I was 17. But before I did that, I was getting offers up the wall and I knew I worked hard, but I knew some of it. I was like, I know this is God. I know it is. And that drew me to go and fast and pray for two weeks to find out what school I wanted. 17 years old. I was the same age as you. Okay. It could be to, to show you as well experience with him because you know that had to have been God. You know that had to have been God for y'all to get that scholarship this week, this week, last week, during mm -hmm. a virus. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You do have an experience, but yes. and there is going to be some tough experience too, because trials and tribulations. You got to count it all joy. It says it. Count the good with the bad, because mm -hmm. and those in all ways he'll make it joy. But it's going to be tough times, and sometimes tough times draw is near. Yes. Yes. And sometimes good times, you can't think it's you too. The same way you got to draw, it should draw you near yeah. to him, to his throne. So that's there. I get it where you're saying like, I want more of experience with him. Pray for it. Mm -hmm. God, yeah, I'm asking you to have an experience with me a little bit more than I've had. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not saying pray for something bad to happen. That's not going to happen. Don't worry. Because that's not an experience. You know, just because other people have had bad experiences and then God blessed them doesn't mean that has to be your experience. But it could be you just walking outside and you feel this air blow through your face and you're like, and your heart just starts to sit still a little bit and you know, wait a second, that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. An experience with God. Yes. So thank you, Destiny, for your honesty. And then Lauren, you're the last one. I would love to hear what you have to say as well about this devotional and then we are going to pray and Sorry. end you right um where are you she right here <laughs> it's too dark in here lauren stop hey lauren you're cool you are not gonna turn it all that way just okay. get in the camera yes. lauren stop i want to see your beautiful face you're gorgeous Lord, Lord, you were you are so nervous. Talk, you were nervous talking. <laughs> like, you were talking behind show. the camera. I know. Okay, okay, stop. All I see is clothing now. Is no. <clears throat> Lord, okay, okay, don't short, don't short. Good, good, you know, good, good, good. Lord, you can talk. Just talk. I'll look at Desiree. It will look kind of funny <laughs> while you're talking. But go ahead, go ahead, Lauren. Ask me what's the question. How has this impact you? How has the devotional impact you? And and tell me more about what you want. Mm -hmm. to continue to do more devotionals. So I know that this is something that's changing, you guys. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Oh, Lauren. Jay, yeah, I also have something to say. What? Are you gonna say it? What did she ask me? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, and the more I'm reading it, I feel like the scripture is talking to me. Mm, hallelujah. It is. Mm -hmm. Okay. It is. That's that's dope. That See, that's why we can say that's dope in this teaching. Because that is dope. 
you be like, man, how's this? Like, even when we just started reading this, it's not even today, true. the teaching that we learned today, I just got through praying over Desiree and you guys about not worrying about stuff. And it was the teaching that's talking to us. Mm-hmm. That's God. Yeah. Hi, Lauren. Yeah. Okay, Lauren. Okay. Tell me. Thank you, Destiny, for that. Lauren, tell me. Well, the ones that I read, I would say I know most of them already. So, um, I would say the impact just reminds me that I actually need to focus on um, God more because <clears throat> Because I don't want to go to hell. That is one of my biggest. That's one of your biggest fears. Can you mute, um, Nivia? Can you mute? Because we can't hear. Nivia, can you mute? Nivia, can you mute your screen? Thank you. Okay, that's uh, uh, Lauren. You Mm -hmm. said one of your biggest fears is hell, right? Yes. Okay, let me tell you about this. Okay, let me be honest. There is a hell. I'm not going to question. I'm not going to have you. It's made for people that do not want God. Actually, I believe it's a love statement of God by saying, I'll give you what you want. Do you understand that? Mm-hmm. So you love God. So you, you're going to have it. You love God. Mm-hmm. Now, because there's things and laws that you still that his laws of his of his will living in his will. There's things of our flesh that are not heavenly yet. That's why Jesus died. Yeah, because of our humanity, because it's filthy, because it's nasty. Yeah. <laughs> but your spirit is what's alive. The flesh is what dies. It's the spirit and it's eternal and it lives everlasting. And those that don't, those spirits that do not want God are going to hell. Yeah. The the spirits that want God are going with him. And if you love someone, if you love someone, what would you do if you love someone? This is a relationship. Now think about it. Who do you love? Who do you love the most right now in your life? Well, myself. Okay, good. That's okay. And so, do you love yourself like the same way you love God? No. That's what you got to change. If I love God more than I love myself, then I know I'm in the right place. Because if that's whoever I love the most, and I have, I have myself above him, then that's not where I need to be. Because he is me. He's inside of me, and I want him to be inside of me. So, yeah. it's a good thing that you're confessing these things Mm -hmm. and we can rededicate you back to where you need to be in your heart, but don't ever be afraid about going to hell, but be excited to be in love with Jesus. Yeah. That's what I was just mentioning. That's what I was thinking about too. Cause I'm like, (laughs) you know how she was saying that she was afraid of hell and all that. She needs to make her relationship with God as in like a love relationship. Like she loves him and that, Everything that she he does for her, she just like I said, a love relationship to the point where she doesn't really think about hell like that and to be yeah. afraid of it. Cause you know you got. I God. don't. Cause you know you got God on your side. Cause yeah. okay, every every night, every single night. Cause yeah, you know you never know you not you might not wake up the next morning. So every night before I I have several prayers that I pray for. That you pray. Several for. things that I pray for. Well, the Bible does say you pray for the peace of Jerusalem, so that's what I do, and I pray for our neighborhood to keep it protected, because I pray that you keep, I read in the Bible when my mom told me, that you pray over your neighborhood, because if, like, demons come, like, they pass over, because they see that it has the glory of God, because you pray over it, and I pray for my family, my friends, I pray Psalms 91 over me, and my family and friends. And then I ask God for forgiveness, and um, and then I do that. 
uh, that's, one, that's wonderful. That, that's wonderful, Lauren. And let me just say this about the demons thing. That's a good thing you pray over your neighborhood because that's your territory. And whatever your territory is your authority. Yeah. But demons can't come in. Mm -hmm. Demons are illegal. The only way demons come in is through people. And that means they accepted them inside their heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They can't hover over nothing. Do you understand? They go. That means that person has accepted a demon inside their heart. And mm -hmm. that's because of sin. Yeah. Demons are illegal. They cannot come on earth. They are illegal on earth. Every spirit, even even angels, and they're illegal on earth unless we petition them to come. Is that how they become it in human form? Yeah. Yes. We petition them to come. They have to have a body. <laughs> they have to. They're spirits. They have to have a body. Okay. Yeah. We can petition them to come on earth. So there's people that to put the, these pe there's people that have received demon demons because of their sin. Yeah. They they let the sin roll into their body, yeah. then their their body has been wide open to sin, and that's why there's soul ties. There's demons coming in in all kinds of way because you've opened your body to the demon. Yeah, she really did too. So I want you guys to know that, but that they're they're if they even when they're in the body that that's still illegal because they can't they're just illegal they're not allowed to be out here now the Holy Spirit is legal because we pray for it to come Jesus left the Holy Spirit the only reason we got the Holy Spirit back on earth because we were always had the Holy Spirit we always had Jesus we always had God when we were in Eden but when we did not have Him when when we messed that up the kingdom left the earth. Yeah. The kingdom of God left the earth. So we're asking, we have to petition. We have to have a relationship. We have to ask God. And that's what you're doing every night, my love. You're petitioning to God and asking him for his kingdom to come to earth and to use you oh. as a vessel yes. to be on earth like it is in heaven, to bring his kingdom. <laughs> when you say Psalms 91, you're saying that me and my children say Psalms 91 as well almost every day. And we say it because we're saying, we believe every word of this that you, you know, that you are our covering, you are our protector, everything that is said. But if you say it in fear, then you're saying it in the sense of that you don't have the authority. And when you say it like that, it's just like talking in the wind. Mm -hmm. Say it and believing it that it is already happening. And you're just saying, thank you for it, God, because I petition you to do this every day in my life. Thank you, Mama. Okay. Any yeah. questions? No. I am so proud of you girls. Listen. It's hard to it's hard to say this, but the more that you learn, the more of the call, the more of the expectation. Don't yeah. get it twisted. Things I fell I fell off. I fell off several times in my life. But the reason why when you say things like, okay, when I was younger, I've been in the church all the time, whatever, that doesn't justify that you know and have a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. I'm get being real with y'all, at the end of the day, you have why it's important to do this devotional to get you because his word is living jesus was the walking word it was the word of god living just walking around so you are every time you read his word it's him coming inside of you and some people talk so bad about the bible get ready y'all in the generation <laughs> five six people translated this the bible wasn't even real it's a white man's bible all kinds of stories Mm -hmm. they can't say nothing about the holy spirit though yeah the holy spirit is real the holy spirit will tell you what is real what that translation is and that's why you said when i read it something touches me that's the holy spirit so don't ever let anybody get you twisted mm -hmm. and all confused because the bible was written by a human being that could have translated it five, six times. I don't care how many times it got translated. You seek him, he'll tell you what it really means. And he's going to tell you what it really means. And he'll give you the right translations as well. He'll give you the Greek, Hebrew, whatever language you need to get 
gets deeper if you keep seeking him. But if you start listening to people and not to God, you're in trouble. You're not here on earth to please people. You're here on earth to please God. Would you laugh not, Desi? Well, I'm not laughing. <laughs> oh, you're like, preach? <laughs> <laughs> preach right you gotta do so I was like she laughed I lived listen I did it y'all I did it I lived it I lived it and I was pleasing I still struggle with that trying to please people and I have to hold back and be like no I don't care I'm here to please my father who loves me who blesses me that treats me like a bride that dresses me every day tells me to put on my crown I'm trying to tell you he is the best thing ever to be in a relationship with fall in love y'all fall in love all right so let's go ahead any questions about any of this like y'all any questions y'all have i i'm 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 a i'm a theologist i know the word so let me know like things you don't understand about any of those teachings just anything any questions you guys have okay right. cool okay if you do text it to me Mm -hmm. And I want you guys to also know, I'm going to show you guys this thing. Hold on. I'm going to show you all my screen. Give me a second to find the picture and I'm going to share my screen. Hold on. Uh, where is that? Yeah, little hands. This one. <laughs> this is a, this is the mm. images, images. I can't find everything more. Yeah. Yeah. Where's the picture of that? No, I don't. Bear with me. I'm looking for the picture so I can show you this flyer. I don't pray out of fear. I pray out of heaven. Yeah, here it is. All right. I'm about to share my screen with you guys so you guys could see. Um, those words look a little bunched up together, right? Don't you think? Girl. Your arm is bunched up together. <laughs> Can you guys see the screen? Can you guys see my screen? So, I want you guys to know I am doing this now as well. I feel a scared screen. Can you guys see this? Yes. 24 hours. All right. Maybe a hotline's really big. I'm gonna send this. I'm gonna send this on the group chat, but I want you guys to also tell your friends about this. This is anytime, you guys. I've already had people call me on this line because I to get prayer. Look, anytime. I'm talking about call me if you in a if you at a party, everybody's drunk, you drunk. I don't care. <laughs> You call me, you ask for prayer, and, and then we pray, and then we find out what to do together. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yes. This is a 24-hour prayer line. This is not just for for young, young adults. This is all. I'm offering it to my teens, too, that's in my program. You call anytime. Anytime. You get into it with your mom. Get into it with your sister. Get into anybody. You call. Jay-Z, I need prayer. And then we talk about it and we, we petition it before the Lord and ask God what to do. Don't make decisions on your own. He, is, he says in his word, and it's true, and I don't care about, look, introvert thing, it's okay to be a little bit of introvert, but it's not good to be alone. See, there's a difference. Yeah. It says in the word of God, it is not good for man to be alone. Yep. We are man, meaning the body is a, is a you know, he's talking, they're talking about all of us, man. We are female of the man spirit, the man spirit. We came from a man. Yeah. So it's not good for us to be alone, men or women. And the devil wants you to be isolated. That's what he did to Eve. Isolated. You know, and Adam was around, but he wasn't around in, in enough time to tell her to say something to that state, to that serpent. Yeah. He came a little late. She already had already bit the apple. So she was alone. That's 
what the devil wants. He wants to isolate you by yourself so you could just go in the corner and be afraid. Look at I had no one praying with during the test was, and I knew what was going on, but I still kept seeking God. And the time this young man calls me two o'clock in the morning on an accident to this prayer, to this line, and God told me after I got through praying for him, and it was an accident he called. He said, "You need to open this line for anybody to call as a prayer hotline." So please take. I'm gonna send this flyer out. You guys put keep it in your own personal line and your own phone, and you send it to your friends as well. Those that are on drugs, those that have issues, anything, sexual issues, anything, they need prayer. And if you have any issues or don't have any issues, you just need encouragement, call me. It's 24 hours. Not only that, if it doesn't answer, it goes to a, a, a prompt where you can push the number and ask for prayer on there in a message. And then we will call you back and pray with you too. So either way, you're going to get some. You're going to get some prayer. You're going to get some love. You're going to be, you're not alone. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to send that out. I want you guys to know about that. Let me get off the screen. And I want to end us with prayer. And Lauren, did you pray last time, Lauren? I prayed before. No, no. I prayed this time. Brooklyn, then. We have next week, we're off. It was, was Kalik. It wasn't it was Kalik. Next, yeah, it was Kalik. Last next week we'll be off. No um, devotional. I'm going to be putting the devotional mm -hmm. together for the the next week after that. Okay. So don't you be concerned. Hmm? You finish make... out. Finish out your devotionals. You got two. You got two more devotionals though. Still, you so, got. You make, them, you make these. Huh? Did you make this devotional? No. Oh. It's a it's a program that I got from um, the Bible, and so um, I use it and I follow through to make sure you guys are doing it, and I learn about stuff that you guys are learning, and then we do it together to talk about. But then I have, there's another one um, that I um, I wanted to do that I saw on there. But I, I you know I have you know some Bible studies that are real deep too. That you know that um, some videos I can show you guys. There's some I do parenting classes too. There's some stuff on there where I do a, do a whole PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. But I'll send you guys some stuff like that, too, especially when I start to do teaching back at GCU. Mm -hmm. That's starting. So I'll send you guys my PowerPoints and, and my videos. I'll record them. If you guys want to watch some of my stuff, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love you guys so much. Get ready. Keep Look look for your WWJD bracelets. I'm trying to tell you it works. It works. Wait, they're going to be delivered to our houses? Your house, yeah. And they're going to be more than one for each so you guys need to use those to disciple others to get on the 21 day devotional with us say look i got this bracelet for you to to remind you that you know to remind you to just what would jesus do in these situations mm -hmm. um, for coming, you're not meeting next saturday, saturday after we will i will be sending you guys the next devotional and i love y'all so much love and you. i desi don't worry are you raising your hand Oh no. <laughs> Dazzy, don't worry. I'm going to contact her about your scholarship. Okay, don't worry. And stay in school. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to need that. Don't give up, baby. It's, I know. Out of school. I, if you, if, what are you trying to change to? A doctor? You want to be a doctor now? No. <laughs> That's what she was going was singing, to be at first. I was doing that, but no, I'm changing it to. Recently, I feel like I'm I want to sure. do something that has to do with like. Just culture, new cultures, cultures. something which in ex yeah analyzing and exploring like different Maybe cultures and stuff like that because they hire people you change it. don't worry you could change it you could change it don't yeah. worry just start off this semester because i put when i when i um applied for asu i put in my major for like biology but i need to change it to don't worry just Come start on. off your basic classes and you could change the next semester immediately and won't set you back at all. You're okay. early enough to change it. I know people that changed it their senior year, girl, mm -hmm. and they had to do two more years. You're fine. You're going in and out. Look ready to pray? Yes. Okay. Lauren. Lauren. <laughs> 
Are you yes. ready to pray? Okay. Oh, okay. Heavenly Father, I pray that you wait. Heavenly Father, thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us another day on earth. I thank you, Jesus, for letting us be able to come on this meeting and letting us be able to see each other. I pray that you protect us during the rest of our lives. That I speak. Hold on. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for everything you've done for us, everything you're going to do. I pray Psalms 91 over all of our bodies. I pray protection over us. I pray if we ever have any sicknesses, I pray healing. I pray joy into those that are lonely, sad. Yes, God. I pray that people that don't believe in you, you show them that you are God and that you are here for us and you are the creator. I pray salvation to those that are hurting during this crisis, for people that died in their families, their friends. I pray that you keep your angels around us. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 What a wonderful prayer, Lauren. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in a couple of weeks and you'll be hearing from me. Please still send me the devotionals on the 21 day though. I want to see them, okay? Mm-hmm. Be blessed. Mm-hmm. Have a blessed day. You too. Bye. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye.